Hey, let's get the door. Come on in. Welcome back to the math lab at Lewis and Clark. I'm Mr. Monty, and today we're wrapping up our series of eight tutorials on the exponential unit. And with this one, I want to discuss EOC week for all the algebra students at Lewis and Clark. EOC, end of course. In getting ready for this week's tests, which will cover three days, we need to just remind ourselves of some of the tools that we have that might make our life a little bit easier and might help us get a better score. I'm going to go over the six basic functions that they're going to talk about on the test that we learned this year in algebra. And I want to make sure that we all remember one of the most powerful tools we have is the calculator. So first, let's look at linear. Linear, an example would be y equals x plus 2. Let's put that into our calculator. x plus 2. Hit the graph button. Slope, rise, over run. Y-intercept, if you can't remember these, you can always hit second, table, and see the data going up and down, help us either graph it or to actually solve some of the questions that they're going to ask on the test. Calculator is a powerful tool, especially if you're not quite sure. How can the calculator help you with the EOC? One of the functions we spent a lot of time on was the quadratic. And here's an example of a quadratic. y equals x squared plus 2x plus 1. Let's try that one. Clear the other one. x up arrow squared plus 2x plus 1. Let's take a look at that graph. In this case, we see that there was one zero where it actually crossed the, or touched the x-axis one time at x minus one. It's a smiley face? Sure, because the sign in front of the x squared was positive, so we have a parabola that opens upward. We need to see some data, see the symmetry, again second graph so we can go to the table and we can see line of symmetry negative one we can see the symmetry zero one one four four nine nine we can see the vertex good another function that we studied this year absolute value this is a tricky one with our calculator so we're going to go back to the home home page here. Hit second, move it up a little. Second zero for the catalog. ABS. All we do is hit enter. And the example we had on this page was absolute value of x plus two. Make sure you close the parenthesis. have to clear that one. I didn't use the y equals. Let's start over there. Clear the previous one. I'm going to go second and zero. Now I hit enter and it enters the absolute value in the y equals. Then we'll go x plus two, close the parenthesis, and hit graph. And hopefully you remember that an absolute value has the v shape. Again, this one opened upwards because there's no negative in front of the absolute value. It was shifted the opposite way, or to the left, two units. So we see that it crosses the x-axis at negative two. We can see that there is a y-intercept. Absolute value. Again, looking at the table, second graph. See the symmetry. Negative two. And then in the y values, the outputs, 2, 1, 0, 1, 2. We see the v shape. 
The next function that we studied, exponentials, which we're in right now, I want to make sure that everybody remembers to use the parentheses when we're entering these. Using brackets and parentheses really helps keep it clear to the calculator what we're trying to look for. PEMDAS. Order of operations. So we're going to go 2, parentheses, 3, close the parentheses, up arrow, X. Now let's take a look at this graph and see if we see the little ski jump. Yep, climbing fast. We see a y-intercept. This is what we call growth. Second table. Again, we can see the values leading to the growth. That was exponential. Around Christmas time, we were studying radical functions or the square root. Clear that one. To get to the square root, we have to hit second x squared. Again, you'll see the parentheses, x plus 2. Make sure you close the parentheses so the calculator realizes that's everything underneath the radical. Hit graph. We can see that it opens up and to the right. Again, using the table, second graph. This is nice because when we're asked about domain and range, we can actually see the word error, 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 which helps us clarify, oh, those x values don't work. The domain starts at negative 2 for the one that we just typed in, and then it grows. That was the radical function. The last of the functions, and there's not a lot of questions that refer to inverse functions in algebra, but just in case there are, again, I really like to use parentheses. 1 divided by x, and this has the two-sided function. We're on this quadrant and this quadrant. Again, we can use tables to help us see that nothing happens at 0. Well, we typed in 1 over x, 1 divided by 0. We can't have that. Calculators really help reinforce that. So that if you're on a test and you're not quite sure, use your calculator as a tool to make sure that you're successful. The last thing I want to talk about today as we get ready for the big EOCs this week is domain and range. We saw just a moment ago how the calculator can help us with domain and range. When we see the word error, wow, that means it can't be part of the input or the outputs. So make sure that you use your calculator to see if an error actually comes up, and that will help you determine the domain and the range of functions, because there will be several questions that talk about domain and range. So as I finish this little tutorial and lead you off into the EOC, I want you to remember domain talks about the x values, the inputs to the function. The range is the y values or the outputs of the function. Well, hopefully everybody's successful this week. Try to do the best you can. And what I mean by that is no blank answers. Those of you that have been working with me the last month in the Math Tutoring Center after school at 7th hour know that I'm really a stickler for no blank answers. Many of you have the talents necessary. You lack the confidence, but try to use your calculator if nothing else. Circle the important words, find out what they're looking for, and you have the tools and the skills necessary to be successful. Once again, it was fun to do these eight tutorials. Hopefully they help you, and hopefully you have some success this week. Remember, it goes on for three days. So if you need to, swing by the tutoring center after school to get some last-minute tips for the Wednesday and Thursday portion of the EOC. And make sure you hop on the train to success.